G'day and welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining me. Heading out to the Murrumbidgee River. But uh, before you get too excited about uh, me being out in the middle of nowhere, I'm going to the most sanitary campground, or most sanitary camping experience you can have in Canberra. I'm going out to the Cotter Campground, which is just outside of town. On the, it's on the banks of the Murrumbidgee River on the sort of junction, the confluence of the Murrumbidgee and the Cotter Rivers. And I'll show you all of that when I go for a bit of a walk. But uh, yeah, it's not uh, not exactly the most, uh, how do I put it? It's not the most isolating experience. There's gonna be people everywhere out there, but uh, hopefully I'm, I'm getting out there early enough. I might be able to get the last camping spot on the end. So I might have a bit of bit of peace if I can, but I know I can get a bit, bit rowdy out there from time to time. It is Friday night too, so and it's a beautiful day. So I'm expecting the place to be pretty busy. But anyway, we'll go out there. We'll go and set ourselves up. And uh, go for a bit of a wander, and I'll show you show you the the Murrumbidgee and the Cotter Rivers. Uh, it's a pretty good little spot. It's uh, often called Canberra's playground out there because it's so easy to get to. But it's a great little spot, and uh, I'll show you all about it. Welcome to the camp. Yeah, this is a little setup for the night. Like I said, you can't get too close to the river. There is a big dam just up the road and uh, they can let water out of it at any time. So you're not allowed to actually camp too too close to the to the river. This is about as close as you can get. But, uh, and I'll show you all that in a second. But uh, this, is a, this is the setup. I'm putting up a tarp tonight. There's not gonna be any rain. It's nice and clear. Probably get a bit of condensation, but it's gonna be a nice day tomorrow. So everything will be able to dry out. So yeah, it's a pretty easy get out set up this time. Um, I'm a fair way away from everyone. Hopefully I won't get disturbed. I, you know, I really don't want to have, have other people's noise you know, disturbing me tonight. I want to just sort of chill a bit. But uh, as for the next little bit, it's, what's the time? It's just after two o'clock. So I've got a, got a fair bit of time before the sun goes down. It's about six hours. So I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to go head up that way, which is where the, uh, the confluence of the two rivers. So the, the Cotter River comes into the Murrumbidgee River just up that way a little bit and then I'm gonna wing back and I'm gonna head up that way as far as I can I don't know whether I can cross the river or not uh, there is a bridge but it's there's no pedestrian access but I might be able to just race across it but um, yeah I want to go for a wander up as far as I can up through a place called Casuarina Sands and up and around there's some little tracks and things like that hopefully we'll see some birds I saw a, an eastern yellow robin here about 30 years ago it was the first time I ever saw her and I thought oh, that's pretty cool so it'll be good to see one of those. I've seen plenty of them since, but I haven't seen one out here, so it'll be good to see one of those. There's also emus out here. Um, you might, every now and then, there's a couple of emus come wandering through, so I might see an emu, that would be cool. Before I do go on it, I, like I said, the, the road is literally right behind me, so you're going to get some car noise from time to time. But motorcycles, this is a big, it's a windy road out here, and up through, you know, the back here to the to Tidbin Biller and out to to imagine you know, all that sort of stuff it's a nice windy road so the bikes come out here pretty regularly too so so you're gonna have to deal with all of that but that's that's uh that's sleeping at the cotter but let's uh get up and go for a wander uh go up and see where these rivers join and uh, show you what that's all about Whew. swimming <laughs> There's a satin bowbird down here, I'm going to go and try and get a photo of him, they're pretty shy and uh, he's likely to skip away but I'll try and get a, get a, get a picture of him. He's having a splash in the river.
Yeah, that was pretty cool. Those uh, male satin bower birds are pretty cool birds. Yeah, so this is the Cotter River, and that's uh, coming down from the Cotter Dam, which is a bit further up the upstream, and I'll show you that in a tick. But as you can see, it comes down here to this big pool, and just over there, you can see, I think that's called Paddy's River, coming in to this little pond, and then the Cotter River heads down there behind where those people are swimming, and then down to where we've just come from. And I'll show you in a minute where it gets down to the Murrumbidgee River, which is a bit further down past where I'm camped. And I'll show you that in a little while when I go the other way. Yeah, you can see a big empty space behind me. There used to be a pub here. In 2003, we had these massive fires that came tearing through here and, uh, yeah, burn it down. And pretty much all the trees except these old she -oaks. So, yeah, it was kind of closed off for a long while and they never rebuilt the pub, but it was a pretty cool spot. You used to be able to come out here and grab an ice cream, grab a beer or whatever, and, uh, yeah, just chill out and have lunch. Shame they never rebuilt it. Yeah, there's this famous Australian poem by a woman by the name of Dorothea McKellar called My Country. And uh, she talks of, you know, rugged mountain ranges and droughts and flooding rains. And that's certainly been the story of Canberra for the last 20 odd years. We, we um, had a massive drought from most of the noughties. So we're talking, you know, 2001, 2002, right through to 2010. Really bad drought. And all this place was just, you know, just not a drop of water anywhere. And uh, the, one of the big uh, water reservoirs for Canberra is Cotter Dam, which is just up here, and I'll show you in a sec. But it wasn't big enough, so it dried up. So we ran out of water, pretty much, and we we're on really tight water restrictions for a long while. But um, yeah, then the rains broke, and uh, we had a yeah a bit of bit of a reprieve, and they built another dam. So they built a massive big dam over the top of the old dam. So. The old dam's underneath the little dam. Oh, the little dam's underneath the new big one. And I'll show you that in a sec. But yeah, then after they built it, it sort of filled up. So it's been constantly raining for the last sort of two years, right up until maybe, I don't know, maybe eight or nine months ago where it started to dry up again. So we had lots of floods. So it's been one thing after another. So when you have a lot of floods, you tend to grow, get a lot of growth, and then it dries out, and then you get lots of tinder, and the bushfires come through. So. That's the story of Australia, and as it is in a lot of other parts of the world, I'm not claiming that that's just an Australian thing, but it's certainly this part of the world. We've had some floods, and we've had droughts, and then we have massive bushfires, and yeah, so it's taken a pounding this area, but anyway, let's go and have a look at the dam. Yeah, so we're not going to run out of water anytime soon, but when I came up here a couple of months ago and for a hike up the top of the mountain overlooking this dam, and I'll uh, show you some pictures from, from above as well. Yeah, there's a lot of water in there. This is just one of the few dams that Canberra has, so we're in a pretty good spot for a little while. St John's Wort. Stuff will be everywhere soon. Bit of a shame, getting a bit invasive. Big ass carp, a couple across the other side too. Yeah, well that's the Cotter Dam. Pretty impressive. Uh, still pretty early. Um, that was about four and a half kilometres up there and back. Um, but it's pretty hot, so I'm going to have a little break. Uh, chill out for a minute. I might actually do a little bit of work. I did bring some work with me to do, so I might just do that, find a table somewhere and, and just have a bit of a break from the from the heat for a bit and uh, do a, check in on a few things. And then I'm going to go for a wander wander down, down the river down this way and uh, see how far I can get it. It's a lot lot of overgrown growth on the, gr on the ground at the moment so probably won't get too far but hopefully the trails are okay. 
and uh, we'll go and see see what we can see. Yeah, let's have a bit of a break. Oh, that's good. You know, I quite often go to the National Library when I've got to do a lot of work, like a lot of reports, or write a lot of you know, words on a in a document of some sort. It's a great spot, yeah, because everyone's just head down, bum up, working. You don't get distracted. You can turn your phone off and just get into the zone. I think I found a better spot. I hope you can see my little swag down there. It's about 100 metres away. Got this far down the down the path and found this wombat hole. Let's go and take a look. Yes, this is where the Cotter River finally joins up with the Murrumbidgee. So that's the Murrumbidgee coming through at the back there. And this is the Cotter coming down. That's a fellow fishing at the, at the confluence. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, so my uh, swag is set up pretty much behind me here on the Cotter River. Bloody nice, bloody hot though. I uh, had to leave my day pack back there because I had to scramble through a couple of little wombat holes and I didn't want to get caught on things so because it was right on the edge of the water I thought if I got caught I might get, end up toppling into the water but it's got my water in it so I'm gonna be thirsty so I might head back so you can see how this river sort of cuts its way through there's little uh, gorges all the way along and it goes right through a bit like this so yeah that's the Murrumbidgee just outside of Canberra pretty nice spot I'm going to head back to camp have something to eat and uh, chillax for the rest of the afternoon don't know what I'll do got a book, might read that for a bit yeah, see you back at camp. Bet that guy's been out fanging his escort around. This is an old rally track as well out here. <laughs> yeah, so this is the view out of my swag. Pretty cool. Hope you can hear me over the bloody motorcycles. Yeah, so this is what I get to go to bed looking at. Uh, this is the Cotter River, not that you can actually see it. The trees are along the <laughs> along the river bank are hiding it from us, but you can certainly hear it. And it's lovely, and the birds are singing. Uh, just for a bit of bearing, uh, the confluence of the river is a little bit to the left, uh, so the Cotter flows into the Murrumbidgee about 20, 30 metres to my left, and the uh, the the little pond I showed you a bit earlier, with Paddy's uh, River flowing into the Cotter River, is up to the right about. I don't know, a couple of maybe a kilometre or so up up to the right, and then the dam is about a, a kilometre further along. So that's where we are, and uh, yeah, so this is what I get to go to bed looking at. Not too shabby. Anyway, right now I'm going to go and have something to eat because I'm getting a bit peckish, and then I'm going to chill out and read a book, and uh, let the sun go down around me. Catch you later. Yeah, dinner's pretty chill tonight. Just got a salad which I knocked up at home. <clears throat> 
Not even going to put it on a plate. You are allowed to have fires here, but they've got to be in the proper fireplaces. And you've got to bring your own wood. You can't just collect wood from around here. Because it um, yeah, upsets the habitat and everything. Which is a good idea. But yeah, makes it makes it something a bit trickier. You've got to actually plan to, to come out here if you want to have a fire. So It's easy to just bring a salad. Crappy cup of tea. Got a thing about tea bags. <laughs> yeah, well that's dinner done. Absolutely stuffed now. Wind's picked up a bit. Hopefully, you know, the muffly thing that I've got, that dead cat, is keeping the wind away. But yeah, I'm gonna probably relax for a bit. The sun's still got a couple of hours of light still so I might just chill out for a little bit I might go for a bit of a wander but I don't think I'll film anything and then just wind into the night so I might uh, call it quits for the day and I might see you in the morning baby magpies down there I don't know whether you saw my little thing I got a you know, baby magpie that's taken up residence in our backyard it's pretty cool I'll put a link in the description. Ooh, coffee. Well, good morning. Welcome to a beautiful morning on the wonderful Cotter River. Not a breath of wind. Birds are singing. Yeah, slept like an absolute log. Unbelievable. There's like this is a really busy campground. There must be like 50 campsites. People set up everywhere, kids running around. And uh, come nine o'clock last night, I haven't heard a noise, a peep out of anyone. It's been amazing. Um, yeah, so. It's pretty good. I'm, I am camped at the bottom of a little hill, so no one can sort of camp next to me because because of the slope. You can't <laughs> you can't set up a tent on a slope, so I have that in my favour. But still, yeah, I'm amazed that it's been as quiet as it is, considering how busy this little campground is. But yeah, that's pretty cool. But it's uh, what's the time? It's just heading on to six o'clock, so still pretty early. I'm not going to go for a walk or anything. I'm just going to get up. Uh, pack my camp up, pack up the swag, and uh, head back into town. It's um, like I said, I'm really just on the fringe of Canberra here. It's not like I'm out of town at all. It's just 10 minutes and I'm home, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to head home, have some breakfast, and uh, see what Saturday has in store for me. Yeah, well, thanks for joining me out at the amazing Cotter River, in beautiful Nunawal country. I acknowledge the Nunawal people as the traditional custodians of this land and the amazing job they did looking after this wonderful country for thousands of generations that we all get to enjoy. But yeah, I'm going to pack up, head home, see what the day has in store. So, until next time, stay safe. <laughs>